Hey there, welcome to Untitled Interview Series number one. Uh, today I'll be joined by my dear friend Alyssa. Alyssa is a choreographer, a dancer, an educator, an artist activist, and she happens to have been the first resident artist for Brandon and my after show exclusive um, resident artist series. Alyssa reached out to me about a month ago, um, shortly after I released Passenger, my new album, uh, to tell me that she was inspired by one of the songs, Leviathan, and had begun choreographing some material for it. So today uh, I will get to catch up with her to talk to her about uh, what, it, what it feels like to her, um, her interpretation of the song, and I'll get the chance to see the material she's working on. So come along with me, let's, let's take that journey. Okay, hi, so I'm here with Alyssa and we've definitely had zero technical difficulties um, getting this working. Um, <laughs> Alyssa, uh, I guess, do you want to just, do you want to just say anything you want to say before you move and, um, and then move and then we'll, we'll get over to, to the chat about it. We, Alyssa and I decided that we wanted, she wanted to show me, um, the movement first so that when we were talking about it, I kind of had a frame of reference and you have a frame of reference, um, but anything that you want to preempt your movement with. You got the floor. Okay, um, I guess I'll just say, working on this so far, uh, I had a realization that, I, I did have a realization that immediately, like, oh, this feels good, this feels right, like this particular piece felt very much like my natural movement quality, the things that I want to do, the drivingness, all these like textures that I could see while listening and um, all of that. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing was, a re um, was that the idea that I guess by virtue of our friendship, your art to me in a lot of ways feels personal to me. Hmm. Um, and so it's like, this felt very much like a conversation between the two of us. This kind of felt like my experience speaking to your experience. And it's only like two minutes so far, but um, definitely a work in progress. Um, and I will say I've never seen this. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never videoed it. I've never watched it. So it's probably super rough. I think I did it pull out the first time like wow. two minutes ago. So <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So it's uh, it's different. It's super vulnerable, and it's uh, not my normal like modus operandi to be like, hey, like I'm working <laughs> on this thing, and I'm gonna like, whoever wants to see it, see it, even though it's a wreck. But, um, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's what this is going to be. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so excited. I, I'm, um, I can't stop grinning. This is very exciting, and I, I, I'm so grateful that, that it feels like that kind of conversation to you, that it feels so personal. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful that, uh, the beauty of any piece, even if it's not a collaboration to begin with, that the collaboration really catalyzes it. So whatever you, whatever it is that you get to show me now, you know that's going to permanently alter the state of this piece, and I'm really excited to to get to figure that out with you. Cool. Um, I'm gonna put the screen just on you, and let's go. Nope, that's just on me. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, that's just on you. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, in what in what way educate me? In what way? Um will we both be hearing the music? Is me playing it? Uh, yeah, can you play it? That probably makes more sense. Mm -hmm. I can play it off my, have it up on my phone. I'll turn it all the way up. Okay. So, um, please excuse my, like, parried, running over, <laughs> start right at the top. I'm sorry <laughs> I didn't think I to, right I, I should have thought to, uh, to DJ the evening. <laughs> I should have thought to be the, the sound, the soundboard <laughs> operator. Yeah. Wait, you can't just teleport over just for like a minute. And yeah. <laughs> get this going. <laughs> With the one man band so operation. <laughs> okay, go for it.
That's so great. Oh my goodness. Ah, it gave me chills. I was like, I was grinning at first, and I always have this brief moment where I think like, is that what I'm going to be doing this whole time? Am I going to be grinning because I'm just so excited? And then I was instantly just lost out of my body, and the only thing I could really feel in my body was I was getting shivers. Oh, it was so great. Yay! Ow. Thank you. Wonderful. I think that, I think that on the on the um, uh, the technical side of things too, I think that it worked out. I think that we'll be able to to see you pretty well. And it was kind of cool because there were like brief moments uh, <laughs> where you kind of glitched for half a second. But you know what? That was really cool. <laughs> oh god! We can always do do double takes because I can't see this before it goes anywhere. Because I'm gonna be like, no, we need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so exciting about this, is that it is so vulnerable. You use the magic word there, you know? Ah, it's so wonderful. And and, and before we go have a, a fully sappy conversation in, in full, it's just so wonderful to watch you move, and it's so wonderful to see your face, and to, to see you be you. Ah, I love getting to see you move in your ways. It's so wonderful. Um, I obviously am at a loss for words, but... No! <laughs> It's, it's felt really good. It's felt, um, brought me back in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, uh, the kind of, like, lack of direction that, that is, um, the world with COVID is, uh, is lessened, um, by, by this. Yeah. Oh. Good. I, I, I understand that entirely. <laughs> I think movement and 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 making and all of this stuff and the sharing and being vulnerable is like really the only thing that's I think kept me through <laughs> and I think it's it's kind of I, I I know Claire and I have used a lot recently just the concept of being like radicalized <laughs> and that's happened to so many of us in so many different ways and sounds scary right like that can sound scary to to be, be to become radicalized and your belief set or your politics or whatever but I think that I'm also just I'm also and most I feel like this time has really radicalized me in love you know it's just it's just radicalized me in terms of you know just being like there's nothing to lose why would I hold back why would I not be vulnerable all the time why would I not just lean into this like why sh why should I be metered here <laughs> who you know metered for whom <laughs> so Ah, this is wonderful. Yeah. What a what a great way to start this this whole series. Um, well, I guess let's let you oh, get excited. let's let you catch your breath, and we can take a minute, I guess, and we'll reset and do a little chat. Does that sound good? Sounds perfect. Awesome, cool. Okay, I'm gonna hit stop. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so tell me things. I don't really have any questions. This isn't an interview. I guess I'm not good at interviewing because I'm just gonna oh. say tell me things. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, well, I'll tell you things uh, about about what. Well, you started to tell me. Yeah. You, you started yeah. to tell me about the movement and and the the feelings and the sentiment yeah. around the movement. Um, did you listen to this before I had released it? Because I had given you like a Google Drive with 
all the material. Had you listened to this track before I released it? I don't remember. You did? Okay. Yeah, uh, not in depth, mm-hmm. but like, it, you know, it had been there and it had been something in my head that was like, uh, that one. Like, that, that felt like me. Yeah, know? yeah. Interesting. Do you, okay, here's another question. Um, sometimes I forget the intros that I put on songs. <laughs> That's like a, I, I, it's almost, um, it's a disservice to the song to say that, like, I just slap an intro on, but sometimes I want to put something to preface the mood, and that really wild soundy thing was, like, it very much sets the mood, right? It's very much, like, super discordant from the rest of the song. Um, although although that, that, that entire track of, of sound is, is beneath everything uh, the whole time, but, but it's right in your face. It's the first thing you experience. Um, if, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, if that wasn't there, how would you have reacted to that song? huge part of the appeal for me was the 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 contrary feeling yeah um but i'm also completely attracted to the uh the drivingness of the of that dynamic after the dynamic shift so i mean i think no matter what i would have wanted to move to it um choreographically like structuring it and finding different dynamics of movement and different textures with movement having that there yeah was very very helpful yeah yeah um i've known you to to choreograph to instrumental stuff almost exclusively i'm realizing as as we talk about this i'm thinking mm-hmm. through the pieces that i know of yours and most of them are are almost exclusively instrumental, and and so how do how does reacting to to something with words uh, change your choreographing process? Does it? Yeah, I I think it does. Um, I always feel so uh, like weird talking about my process because yeah. where there are plumb lines that kind of just that are me as an artist creating. Um, changes so much yeah uh, sure what the project is and you know so uh i used to choreograph to uh well, used to perform exclusively to songs with lyrics interesting um not instrumental because growing up in a studio you know growing up in a um you know kind of contemporary based studio competition based studio that's the music that was used it wasn't really a lot of instrumental right. because it's it is hard there's there's definitely more um vagueness there's a lot more room to play and that can be intimidating for young dancers sure uh so but having this now um i think it just i'm saying that going back to that going back to having lyrics it adds another layer um I think spending so much time choreographing to instrumental music, uh, it's it's forced me to work in a way that allows the movement to speak for itself. And now going back to having lyrics, I get to marry the two. Hmm. I get to marry, um, you know, matching or or um, complementing lyrics uh, to that kind of vagueness of the instrumental music, and um, I think it helps me just personally create narrative in my head, create an understanding of what the move, moves all need to mean. And sure. Yeah, so it, 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 it changes it, it changes it, it gives it another layer, I'd say, to just condense it. It gives it another layer of, um, of meaning, of understanding. Yeah, no, I get that. That's, that's a cool journey, too, like to, mm-hmm. to have started where you know, lyrics is the expectation and then to move away and to move back. Um, which I guess is my, well, sort of my journey as well, right? Like, yeah. in some ways, like having started mm-hmm. writing instrumental music and to come to lyrics as an extra layer. Um, when you were talking about choreographing this with me, you were texting me a little while ago and you were telling me that you keep listening to it and you keep looking back at the lyrics. So I, 
I asked that question because I, I kind of made me think that you were interacting with the lyrics as well or in a different way. Um, can you talk on that? Like, is there, is there, do the, is there something in the lyric, um, about the lyric that connects to your movement, maybe on top of or even separately from the sounds? Yeah, um, I think the, um, I think the lyrics come from a single narrator, hmm. um, and so to have a single mover, um, I think that connection helped me, uh, it, it, to me, when I read the lyrics, I see, um, I hear somebody telling story it's a speaker speaking from a place of um progress or a place of growth and they're looking back on things that have happened and things that have made they are and who they are and who's around them Mm. um and i I think just kind of common themes of like you know who am i to others who um who am i letting in why am i letting them in uh you know, what, what am I facing? What are the challenges that I have faced and I'm through and what, what's still, uh, nagging at me and what's still, you know, so that's, that's kind of what I tried to think about because that's what I would perceive listening to lyrics. And I think I told you, like, you know, that's my answer right now, but every time I listen to it, it's new imagery, it's new understanding, it's new meaning, it's, you know, completely different than what I thought it was before, and it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's... the question. (laughs) No, it does, it does. I I think that's a funny thing, like, I don't know how to say this. I think that you and I, maybe you with your choreography and me even with my, my music writing, are relating to lyric in very similar ways, because I think of my lyric as abstract, and this... It can't be, right? Like, lyric can never be um, divorced from the context of language, uh, and that's what's so alluring about it. Whereas sound can be divorced from that, you know? Um, I was always really, like, disappointed in... (laughs) This is going to sound like disappointed, like, grandma or something, but I was always very, like, disappointed to hear, like, generalities, like oh, you know, a, a, a song played in a minor key is sad, right? Like, there is context for that. It makes, in our Western world, there is, like, that makes sense, you know? Like, oh, something in a minor key is, is sad. Oh, you might be frozen. Are you there? Uh-oh. Oh, no, okay. I might have you again. Blink twice if you're not frozen. Can you hear me? Oh, she's blinking. Okay, cool. I think it's on a slight delay, but that's fine. Um, good? Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're okay. good. Okay, cool. We were, like, buffering or something. Um, yeah, I think just to, to hear those generalities of, like, a major key is happy, minor key is sad, you know, like, I think a, a person writing music should should utilize those concepts abstractly, right? And, like, really push the limits of that. If we're just playing into that, that sucks. Just like if I'm saying, you know, if I'm writing a lyric and it's just like the sunlight and it's and the and the flowers and that's like, oh, that must mean a happy song. I think that's wrong. Um, and so I think like I write in these abstractions, and it seems like you're interpreting them in these abstractions, which is really beautiful and and amazing. Um, and it's a funny experience. <laughs> it's a funny experience, like revisiting my own writings. Uh, Maybe you, maybe you can relate to this with choreography, that when I listen to something, once I've gone through the process that is so arduous of, like, the, the true labor, right? Like, the giving birth to a body of work is so just exhausting. And it puts you in a certain headspace. You're in a certain place for that process. You're just going, going, going. Can't really think of anything else. It's almost, it's almost like a survival mode. And then... You come out of it, and you need to heal a little bit. And then, like, down the road, you can start to look back, 
and in, oh, it's only that at that point in looking back that you start to actually like understand who who you were speaking as uh, or who you were talking to and usually it's usually it's you usually it's almost like for me I feel like it's they're almost love like love letters to myself in the future or something like that I don't know that when I'm doing it but it's just happens to be the case um, so I kind of relate to that that like even me that song is so saturated with information um, and it and it stands to reason that it would be something that you would be drawn to out of out of all of those um, uh, I won't I don't have to go too deep into this but that one took the longest out of that entire album it 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 began I don't know if it was the if it was at fault but it 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 began uh, at the beginning of a pretty serious writer's block and I worked through it during a writer's block that lasted uh, easily like eight months <laughs> um, and mm -hmm. it just kept shifting and changing and shifting and changing and I I really I really despised it uh, and I despised it in many ways um, I don't think I would actually say I despised myself because I don't really feel like that's ever the case but as close as I could have as close as Jake could have gotten to despising himself you know I was I was seeing myself mm -hmm. in that piece I was having a really hard time relating to it because I was having a hard time relating to myself that's kind of what happens during a writer's block and um, and it and it felt like such such an arduous task in and of itself just as a piece to to come through and and there were so many moments where like I thought the song was done and I would just layer on another story basically another piece you know whether that was sonically um, like that intro or you know add a drum part or add this or add that in every piece it was just like it just felt like sweating profusely it felt like another fever you know um but mm -hmm. but in that it is it is incredibly saturated and when i go back now as somebody who really has begun to heal <laughs> um yeah it is like i kind of have the same t the same thing it's like wow i really i really was feeling a lot of things here there's a lot to take i think um a lot of overwhelming you know it's it's really it's really uh, if if I could speak to it, it feels to me like the sense of overwhelming, you know, human human overwhelming. Um, and I kind of I think I got that even just gritty and through <laughs> through this feeble means of communication. I feel like I I was able to see some of that in um, in the movement that I saw. You know, uh, I think one of the reasons that. I relate so much to the dance that you do to who you are as a person is there's there's something in both of our art that is very much about the the joyful hu the joyful futility of existence does that make sense uh oh yeah yeah absolutely like uh it's it is it is innately contrasting right like like the I think I, sorry i think i lost you here Oh, can you hear me now? I think I think we're on. We're just on a slight delay. Happens. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I your movement is always so meaningful to me because you interact with gravity so severely, um, both with your push and pull. You have a, you no really. You have a push and pull. Like you know, you have the ability. I think I think expert mm -hmm. dancers have the ability to just float. You know that and that like it like. It chokes me up when I see it, like just the ability to just, mm -hmm. just re refute gravity, but and you do that, but you contrast it with, you know, such intense movement, um, and that really does feel like the place that that humans exist, which is this space between, you know, f feeling the, the the dread in the futility of existence, and the joy in, well. I only have this existence. I'm gonna fucking use it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna I'm gonna live it up, baby. <laughs> and that's that's what I that's what I was seeing. I don't know if that means anything yeah. to you. Yeah, absolutely. I I think um, I think that quality that you see in my work definitely comes from a place of like, you know, it, it is a human moving through space. 
right. when you see dance, you know what I mean? Or <clears throat> it's, it's a human who's manipulating and controlling their space. And I think art in general, I think that's, um, that's my favorite part. <laughs> it's my favorite part of theater. It's my favorite part yeah. of music. It's my favorite part of everything, of dance. That it's a human doing that. And so uh, I, there's absolutely a place for, you know, the very um, beautiful, the floating, and the, you know what I mean? There's, there's so, it's so necessary. Um, but in real life, you know, uh, my movement becomes so attached to uh, emotion it just it always works out that way even if i don't endeavor to make a piece based in emotion it's just who i am yeah sure uh, as a person and that so it just becomes very interconnected and to me especially with this piece it's like you can't have the bad without the good you can't have the progress of speaking from this place of growth without visiting where it was developed from mm. you know so that, I think, translates into that kind of movement quality. Where it was being developed from is, is human. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree um, entirely. Unintentionally, yeah, unintentionally, yeah. but that's... Uh, yeah, I think I agree with that. It's... it's. Uh, yeah, to, 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 to remove yourself from that is it feels um, like... A, somehow like like a desecrating you know or somehow like sacrilegious to to remove your art from its origin which is this you know right yeah um so uh now i guess i'll put you on the spot um even further than having to show your piece before you've even seen it yourself (laughs) um what would you of course, this is like something that could change as much as the piece itself could change over time. But what would you see this piece doing? What do you see, where do you how do you see this piece being utilized, if if at all, if ever? First time, this is I have an answer to this kind of question. Okay. Um, of to attach this to um, the trio that you uh, compose the music for. Um, I think choreographically, structurally, um, I think it makes a lot of sense Mm. to have uh, that kind of story or um, experience uh, as as an epilogue to Rio. Um, Yeah. And, you know, I, because I, I am in, you know, in my brain and in space uh, working towards an evening like performance and I, I, I'm trying to think there's a lot of ways that you can do that there's a lot of ways to um, you know, you can pick and pull pieces that are completely separate and you know, but it's kind of like the dream to have an evening like performance that has those through lines and has that kind of um, you know, or at least a wave of of connection. Sure. Uh, so eventually, I would love for it to be that. Um, in you know practical means, uh, where we are right now in the world, uh, you know that's yet to be um, discovered. I think. Yeah. Sure. Um, Brandon had brought up a really great point about uh, theater in the round and outdoors and and what that could look like uh, when yeah. we had our our talking day. And uh, that's been really bouncing around in my head for like since then, and it's with a lot of like very serious implications. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like when and where and how. Yeah, um, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, so I think eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's where that's where we're headed in my brain. Well, that's um, wonderful. You know, that. you. I I asked I asked because I knew that you wanted to tie it to something, and me being. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if it's just in space or or thick skulled. I I did not realize that you meant you wanted to attach it to the other piece that I had written, <laughs> because I think you mentioned it as a different piece. Um, I guess for context, uh, for anybody who's watching this, um, Alyssa had written and create created a, a piece for a trio with a different song um, a couple years ago now, and. Uh, 
asked me to write a piece of music that would work instead of that song, and uh, and it was a really cool process. Um, evidently, I didn't even know. Evidently, the process worked because I didn't even know what song you were talking about uh, when I when I recomposed or when I re yeah when I recomposed this 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 dance. I didn't listen to the music. I just watched the video like a thousand times, and I created a song uh, that would work exactly for the choreography, which was uh, really a very special um, process I had never done before. Um, so I didn't even when you when you mentioned what. What court, what trio with what song? I was like, well, I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> Sounds great. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I might have confused you because I think I also mentioned a different piece that was not a trio, and I said gotcha. different music, but I realized internally, like right after I said that to you, I was like, no, the other one, the trio. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think the thing too, just to speak as an outsider as somebody often so auxiliary to dancers um, and to the dance world is, you know, you talk about like when we were setting up for you to show me this dance, you said, oh, you know, it, it, it's very vulnerable to show something so new before it's finished. I think the wonderful contrast to that in that's, that's sort of a norm in the dance world is as you are working towards something that you believe in your heart of hearts is going to be an evening length performance, you're still showing basically scenes from that. And that's that's vulnerable in and of itself, right? Like we think of it differently maybe because it's like, oh well that piece is finished, right? But it's like that's such a beautiful thing to begin showing works before they're even a finished thing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the norm I think, right? Like that that you, you know, as you were coming forward with an evening length performance, you you might go, if, if we were in a different world, you might go and show two songs and then three songs and then five songs from it, you know, or choreographies um, at, you know, different, what would you call it? Not open mics. <laughs> I only have my reference point. <laughs> showcases, yeah, yeah, I guess. Open mics. No, uh, yeah, showcases, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's just so cool. It's such a fascinating and beautiful thing to me. Uh, well, I think I think I have, I think I've asked all the questions I can ask based on the little bit that I know. I I'd be happy to touch base with with you about this and anything else again at some point. Um, and I think the only thing that I'd want to ask you uh, as we come to a close is: Do you have anything that you would want to uh, promote or have anybody look into or have anybody support financially uh, in this in this very difficult time? I'm sorry, I missed a little, I missed the end of that. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, uh, I sorry. said in, like... Sorry. <laughs> we're just going to go back and forth and apologize. <laughs> um, I was just saying that, that as we come to... A, <laughs> as we come to a close with all of this, do you, do you have anything that you want to plug? Do you have anything that you want to promote or shout out to, um... For anybody to support either with their views or their likes or their follows or their money uh, as the arts is really hungry uh, for support right now. Do you have anything on your mind? Yeah, um, I mean, personally, uh, I'm just, I'm on I'm at a Natalie dance at pretty much everything, Instagram and uh whatever else and that's also uh an email address anataliedance at gmail.com if you'd like to get in contact with me if you have a project you want to do with you know whatever if you just have questions um my vimeo link is on there somewhere if you would like to see the trio that we've been talking about um it's called we will endure um yeah i am uh at a loss at the moment um for any specific uh, cause and I'm sure as soon as we hang off I'll be like damn it um, <laughs> I can put it in the I can put it in the description of the video it's okay yeah perfect um, but I will just say that yeah I mean I'm sure whoever's watching this does not need to be told this but uh, 
the arts are are so so crucial and critical to a functioning world yeah and i think a lot of people have seen at this time um the necessity but i know that there's a lot of people who have not recognized that so in a kind way just continue to share the importance of art the importance of kindness the importance of being human and sharing that with the world and uh please vote (laughs) yeah please vote (laughs) yeah so that people in power um people who will be in power who can recognize this and um recognize how crucial it is to have art yeah society yeah art art can never to to use what i said or before like i don't think art can be divorced from humanity and i don't think that art can be divorced from activism in the same way right because to to be alive is to be a form of activism and to to -hmm. cultivate life and humanity among each other among ourselves is a form of activism and so um there are uh, there are definitely a lot of people um, who still are really not on board with the fact that, that art is crucial or that artists maybe have something to say or something to share, um, and that's okay. It's our job to, to help open them up a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, I agree. Um, vote and, uh, and protest and riot if you have to do that. Sometimes that's necessary as well. Um, I think the thing that I would I would say uh, this is being recorded on Tuesday morning, um, the twenty seventh. Any day uh, that passes is a crucial one, and there are just absolutely heinous things going on every single fucking day. But uh, today, um, I would I would advise that if you have a dollar, um, throw it at a bail bo- a bail bond fund, or what are they called? A bailout bailout fund um because there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of protests a lot more protests happening and um mm-hmm. and uh people deserve people deserve to be supported uh and know that they are safe to protest which is just the most essential part of any any functioning society is the the act to use your voice so um other than that, I mean, what else could what else could I even promote after promoting something like that? Uh, that's obviously the most important thing is just to be able to to be able to endure together. Um, but uh, but um, I'm doing these. Uh, this is the first. I'm so I'm so incredibly grateful to have you as to have you have been the first uh, artist resident in our Patreon exclusive series, um, which is still ongoing. You can go support us there at Patreon.com slash the after show um all of that money goes towards our residents and towards maintaining uh that community at large um and i have music out i'll link to which includes the song leviathan that that you heard a little bit of Alyssa's working on a piece for um i also have uh a patreon which eventually may hope help to keep a roof over my head <laughs> if that if the time comes um so it's that's nice (laughs) but um yeah go go support an artist in whatever way you can um i would say go hug an artist uh don't really don't do that yet um but hug them in the ways that you can which is just support support the work they do and listen and and uh listen to what they might have to say because because it's probably pretty important um but cool all right i think we'll end there Thank you again so much, Alyssa. I, I'm just, I'm just so grateful. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you, thank you. I'll talk to you soon, and I'll see everybody else whenever I do the next one of these. <laughs> <laughs>